Hey there, Booktooth. Noah. How's it going tonight? Friday night here in Georgia. And, uh, yeah, we're, uh, we're chilling. <laughs> hey, Scott. How are you doing? Scott out in Utah. So I started this one a little bit later just in an effort to have um, a little bit more of the, you know, central time zone and uh, Pacific time zone uh, able to join, you know, and it and it be just a better time because if I do it at seven where I'm at, that's like, like four o'clock for Pacific time. You know, they're still at work if they if they go to work during the day and that kind of stuff. So I, I, I just figured I'd start it a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. What's up, Becky? What's up, Scott? Hey, Summer. Nice to see you. Thank you for coming in all. And uh, Modern Metaphysake, man, I love your channel. I love it. I mean, I just love the tarot. I do love the tarot so much. And and if you see one of my other lives, I was, I was showing my Thoth tarot. I got it right here. My Thoth tarot that I actually, uh, it's a jumbo deck that I made borderless. I love this thing. I love it. I mean, look how beautiful the cards are when they, you know, have no borders, when it's just Frida Harris's, you know, awesome, awesome stuff. Yeah, I love your channel, man. You're you're showing some really good stuff. That uh that modern mystics tarot is so awesome. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick one up. For sure. <laughs> Salutations, Summer. <laughs> Very cool. Happy Friday night, y'all. Steve Fuller. What's up, buddy? I figured we might uh if the bookish if you know bookish Bryants are here, Steve Fuller's here. If Mark shows up, I don't I don't know if Esten will show up. He's never been in any of my lives. So um we might get into some Perdido Street Station spoilers in this, but I'll I'll definitely give some heads up for and just ask if people are going to be reading uh Perdido Street Station so that I don't so that I can let them, you know, duck out <laughs> or whatever. So I'm going to be looking over this way. This direction is where I got my chat set up. Uh Streamlabs the what I use to stream on here has changed its layout and I and I don't see the chat on the screen anymore. So I have to look over and see it like that and I'm going to miss <laughs> I uh I was tarot obsessed for a while. But I can't, I could never get away from the Thoth Tarot deck once I was really in it, like in it. So, um, that's just the one that I use for my personal, and I, and I don't do like readings. I don't, I'm not, I'm not one to just like do readings for anybody else. That's for sure. I pull some cards for myself, but I, uh, it's all about spiritual growth. You know what I mean? It's about, it's about, uh, moving through the paths and all that kind of thing. <laughs> nice yeah recognitions book club yeah happy friday the 13th man so recognitions book club that's the that's the uh the account that i was talking about a couple times on the channel that's doing the jr read through uh i'm about halfway through brother of jr and stephen fuller who's on the chat as well we've been in talk about JR as we're going through it it's so fun what a cinematic uh, Steve Fuller called it out that it's a very cinematic book and it definitely is it is uh, one of these things where um, <laughs> it's so auditory and you're just like in the it's it's all scenes it's not chapters it's scenes from a from a movie or something like that it's so fun we have a uh, we have a lot of fun, and we're kind of talking through it as we go through it. I'm actually listening to the bulk of it on Audible. They have an exclusive uh, audiobook of JR, 
where this reader is doing um, different voices as at, you know in the different scenes so it makes it very very awesome to go through and uh, and you're just and you're just in it I love the transitions I called it out that these transitions um, I, th I think because I mean you know written in the late 70s right um, so not not at all as connected of a world as we're in right now that these transitions are like precursors to the amount of connectivity that we have going on in our society right now that um, the different transitions are like through phone lines or even days passing with very little said just uh, somebody will be like no um, like when the when the secretaries are hanging out in the office <laughs> and just doing their nails and and stuff like that the whole time that angel is gone and it's just what's up timmy thanks for coming by um that you know she'll say yeah well ain't, ain't norman's not going to be back for uh a couple of days but then you know later on in that same conversation it'll she'll answer the phone and say yeah he'll be back tomorrow so you know just by that that one day has passed that it's the next day at work and they're talking about going shopping again you know what I mean? so so it's just uh it's a very enjoyable book what a funny oh it's so funny i love jr i really do i love jr as a character because he's so sincere yeah can you hear the aesop rock is it cool or should I turn it up or should I turn it down? I got the new album going in the background. Uh, Aesop Rock's new album, I think it's called A Guide to the Spirit World. And uh, Aesop Rock is a master. So I've been listening to it all day. <laughs> I've been listening to it all day. And uh, I've probably got through the album twice, maybe two and a half times. So I'm just uh, I'm just listening in seventy five. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's great. Um, my favorite probably is something like the Jumping Coffin or something is the name of the song. Just my first my first favorite you know off the album. But I love Aesop Rock. The Malibu Ken album is probably one of my favorites of all time as far as rap collaborations are go but as far as Aesop Rock's personal albums The Impossible Kid all day The Impossible Kid is the the spirit world field guide that's right very cool yeah um Impossible Kid all the way so uh yeah let's do some haul action you know what I mean I'll let y'all know uh I got I got I got some up here that are that are just stuff that I'm reading through and reads for uh what I'm what I'm gonna be doing over the next couple of months, but this is uh, some of the stuff that I got over the the last week week and a half that I haven't shown. But y'all at see Instagram is where I kind of give these little Easter eggs that I don't show on my channel. So um, first I got Gene Rice of oh, Wide Saragasso C. This comes, and you see, I mean, it's bent. I got this at a thrift store. I saw it, so I just grabbed it because I had listened to the book chemist and his take on it, and uh, and I thought it was interesting. And then so when I find it, when I see it for super cheap, you know, fifty cents, a dollar maybe, I just grab it, you know. So uh, very cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, Timmy. Any, anybody who's got me on uh, Instagram gets all the little Easter egg action because there's a lot of things that I just take pictures of. I try to do a picture a day on Instagram, and I don't necessarily say anything about those in my um, on my channel. You know what I mean? I, I grabbed I grabbed Perdido Street Station because we might want to talk about it a little bit. If we're going to, then I'll show it. You know what I mean? But uh, those are my current reads. Is Whoa, I just finished Perdido Street Station. There's a video up on my channel. It's awesome. Uh, and then 
Gaddis's JR is what I'm doing right now, along with Oblivion by David Foster Wallace. Doing that a little a little bit of uh, book book read along action with I ain't finna to read that and Scion Das. <laughs> You have yet to read the, read the book, and you have watched the movie of what? Summer. <laughs> of which one? Wide Saragossa C. <laughs> Very cool. Glad to see everybody there. So I got, uh, Gandhi's the story of my experiments with the truth. So this is Gandhi's um, autobiographical work. He wrote this in his life. It goes through so much of his life. And it looks like an, a wonderful, a wonderful uh, read. Um, Steve Fuller has actually read the bulk of this book, I believe, already. And I love, um, I love Gandhi. I love uh, the whole nonviolent protest, you know. We're not, we're not here to force anything we're never going to be able to force anything to happen but we can uh stand up for what we believe in and we can just um you know uh remain true to ourselves and that's what it comes down to and that's what gandhi i i think um personified big time in his life <laughs> he puts the livy in oblivion I tell you, uh, I, I told Scion and I told I ain't finna read that. I said, yo, uh, I'm down to do a read through of Oblivion, but these stories are dark, man. This is, this is dark David Foster Wallace right here. Especially uh, one of my favorite of all time, you know, Big Old Neon, for sure. So uh, the second book, or the third book that I'm going to show in this haul right here, <laughs> yeah, that's right. An eye for an eye makes the world go blind. That's for sure. That's I mean, Gandhi is is amazing, and um, I believe that Gandhi. I want to. I'm eager to know if in this book, if Gandhi uh, mentions Leo Tolstoy's work, "The Kingdom of God Is Within You," because I love that Tolstoy work of "The Kingdom of God Is Within You," and. It was a influence and called out as an influence on Gandhi's uh, worldview in in a couple of places, and I want to know if it's in here somewhere. Very cool. <laughs> right. Very cool. So uh, my next haul is a little bit of my personal. <laughs> my personal fa fascination and modern uh, metaphysica is going to uh, probably dig this one a lot. This is um, one that I found at uh, Half Price Books, Becky and Scott. I found this at Half Price Books, Adam and the Kabbalistic Tree. So this is a uh, book of, on Kabbalah put out by Weiser. And it, uh, it looks very, very interesting. Just going in, it's written by a, 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 a Jew, Jewish Kabbalah is what we're in. And that's where I really, you know, kind of sit myself is in, in, in the more Jewish Kabbalah. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> so uh, in here, uh, it breaks down the different worlds, the body, the psyche, the soul, and the spirit and um, I love the ways that uh, even just the table of contents is laid out because it digs into the tree in a very very uh, extensive way and you know these the kind of way that uh, Jewish Kabbalah works out has had been um, you know quiet for a very very long time A little bit of the tree of life right there. Laid out in a uh, body and psyche way. And um, it had been secret. It's for initiates. It's for the inner circle of Jewish practitioners, Jewish rabbis. 
but now you know we have we have it all you know everywhere you know for anybody who wishes to look for it for sure very cool huh yeah i got it at a uh, half price books maybe i don't know eight bucks very cool I was I was really really interested in getting getting that one. I mean, I probably had a fat stack of books, of course, right? <laughs> had a big had a big fat stack and I had to, you know, whittle it down before I got up to the counter. But that's what I usually do at uh at half price. And one of the things that caused me to whittle it down because I'll go into different sections and I'm looking for uh different stuff, you know, that I that I'm interested in. I found uh, uh, Gass's, um, William Gass, um, Ohmsetter's Luck, and I had never read that. So I had it, but I had to uh, get, I had to put that one down because I had, uh, I, I, I wasn't going to spend too much there, you know what I mean? Just make my TBR ridiculous. So um, when I went, and then I'll go to the, uh, to the clearance section. <laughs> right yeah i have uh yeah the heart the half price books in marietta that's the one i'm talking about that's the one i go to all the time as well i mean not all the time i, I usually get by there at least once a month and uh they do a great job with moving through so much stuff and um really uh you know if you see something that you like and you don't grab it the next time you're there look on the clearance shelf because they clearance off so much stuff and it doesn't matter it's just on like the time frame of what it is and that's it <laughs> yeah our our, our 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 tbrs are busting on booktube that's how it goes all the time what's up uh josh thanks for coming by brother awesome but uh what i had found on the clearance okay now check this out what I found on the clearance is um, Susan Sontag's Reborn Journals and Notebooks, 1947 to 1963. So uh, I had to, I had to do myself a favor and get this one right. What what an amazing uh, female intellectual. There we go. What do I believe in the private life or in holding up culture and uh in, in on the back here it says i intend to do everything to have uh one way of evaluating experience does it cause me pleasure or does it cause me pain and i shall be very cautious about rejecting the painful i shall anticipate pleasure everywhere and i'll find it too because it is everywhere i shall involve myself wholly everything matters susan sontag was a was definitely a very deep uh intellectual even a mystic individual and i love it i love it for sure so there's the hall some sontag some gandhi's autobiographical works and a uh a kabbalah a book on kabbalah that i couldn't wait to uh to grab <laughs> happy friday for sure happy friday everybody yeah what a uh what a what a great uh bookstore half price books is it's really uh the best one around outside of the perimeter i love <laughs> yeah you do summer you're gonna love uh you'll love sontag for sure susan sontag is a is a master writer and she uh she did she did not only books but she I, I believe she wrote uh scripts you know she wrote movies as well she did like three or four movies very cool <laughs> last looks grooming company nice to uh nice to see you first time i've seen you on the channel you're you are very welcome happy friday the 13th right <laughs> for sure so uh I just showed I just showed a little bit of haul action that I did. It's basically the Susan Sontag letters and uh, notebooks, journals and notebooks there. 
Gandhi's autobiographical works. Adam and the Kabbalistic Tree is uh, some Kabbalah action. And then I got Gene Rye's Wide Saragasso Sea. And this is it has the unique distinction of being one of these uh, literature works that actually pulls from another work of literature, uh, Jane Eyre. Jane Eyre uh, by Charlotte Bronte plays, um, you know, one of the characters from Jane Eyre plays a part in this book. So it's very cool to have another writer, you know, have the, the, the bravery, actually, to pull a character out of such an iconic and such a classic work and uh, and use that. Chris from the basement, nice to see you, brother. You are very welcome and nice to, uh, thank you for coming by, for sure. Happy, uh, happy Friday. <laughs> Little Friday action. So, uh, I'll leave, I'll leave the, uh, I'll leave the uh, halls up over here, and then we'll talk about a little bit more. Let's see, can you see? We'll just see. We'll just get Sontag's uh, face in there. Put some, uh, there we go. There we go. So uh, we've had an amazing time reading Perdita Street Station, haven't we? What an amazing work. So uh, I've, I've been super surprised. It's one of the most surprisingly awesome books that I've read this this year. <laughs> I bet. Very cool. <laughs> All right. The Decameron, Don Quixote, War and Peace. Man, the Magic Mountain. Uh, summer at... Uh, Cozy reading with Quaker Cats is it is in the uh, in the chat. She's actually reading the Magic Mountain right now. I'm enjoying your uh, your takes on that summer. That's for sure. It's uh, I, I I I commented that last video. I was like, man, I wish I was reading this, <laughs> but I can't read everything. I can't read everything at once. That's for sure. So you know, it's just gonna be what it's gonna be. Um, I'm doing. Charles Dickens, David Copperfield in December. That's why I have that sitting up there because it's just a projected future read that I'm going to do in December. Oh, I want to read Duck's Newberry Port for sure. It was on uh, Chris Villa's 10, you know, favorite big books of the year. And um, I haven't heard him talk about that. I don't know if he's done a video on that specifically. But uh, I definitely want to read Duck's Newberry Port. Hey, baby. Thanks for coming by. <laughs> yeah, last last looks. Don't let them fall over. You're gonna get a. You'll get a. You'll get a big uh, nod on the head like Becky does when she reads her hard covers in bed. <laughs> you know, lay down. But. You know, <laughs> just how it goes. But uh, I'm loving Jr. This is this is just a very unique book. I don't know if anybody has uh, has done anything quite like that before. You know, just a book that's all dialogue and so cinematic, c cinematic in the way that uh, it presents itself, and you're just going from scene to scene. So much, it's so enjoyable. And and what I wanted to say, that's what I wanted to say is that J.R. as a character, he's so obsessed with money. He's so, like, completely, you know, overly obsessed with money. And he's a middle school kid. But he's so sincere. You know what I mean? And the, the way that he talks to Bast, and the way that he is needy, um, you know, you just get this sense that he's such a sincere young uh, boy. And... He just is who he is. He's not putting on any airs. This is just the kind of life that that he's in. This is the kind of world that he's in. So, oh man, I love Jr. I love him as a as a character, and uh, what a cluster <laughs> that world is. What a cluster Jr. is, and um, I'm really loving it. 
Nice. Hey to the Lit House. Thanks for coming by. And yeah, I hope you get it. I, I really, you know, it, you're you're gonna love it. I would I would say you're gonna love it because when it comes down to it, um, I wouldn't recommend Perdita Street Station to somebody. I wouldn't recommend it necessarily to like to Summer. Unless, you know, I don't know how you are as a reader, Summer, necessarily. But, um, Perdido Street Station is super dark. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of, I mean, it's just not pretty. It's not, you know, there's, there, there's a lot of, uh it's just, it's just gritty like that. So gritty. So, um, that's the only way. <laughs> that's the only way that I would uh, definitely say uh, maybe you shouldn't read JR is if, if you've only read you know things that uh, that are lighter and you don't want you know a really dark it's not that it's nihilistic it's not nihilistic but it's just that the subject matter a lot of the subject matter you know like would require trigger warnings <laughs> and stuff like that so um I'm reading 100 Years of Solitude in January. That's why I pulled that one out. And uh, I'll just keep that one even more on the back burner because, you know, it's something that I'm, uh, that is that is on the horizon. But it's something that we can talk about if we want to. I'm, uh, I'm reading just so I don't t fall too far behind. <laughs> I, uh... I don't, I do my, you know, I watch some politics stuff for sure, because how can you not? But I do my best not to, um, you know, play in the day-to-day -day narrative. You know what I mean? I, I, I'll find out what is going on when everybody else does, no matter what I do. And I'm not emotionally invested in it, that's for sure. <laughs> Becky said, dudes, those things are hazardous. They are. You know, you can't read, you can't read the hardcovers in bed. <laughs> can't do it. So, um, I'm looking forward to the Oblivion. Uh, I haven't read the entire, I haven't read the entire collection. Just only, uh, some of them. And, you know, it's, uh. It's just it's just one of those things that I have to experience. So to do it with a group reading, that's the way to go. It's just such a cluster. Oh, JR is. I tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Summer, I would I would say, you know, yeah, it's it's very hardcore. It's not something that, you know, everybody's going to really enjoy. You're going to be like, "Oh no, oh no, oh no," like all the time. But it is crazy interesting. Hell yeah, Josh. <laughs> Josh says, does he think that Perdido is um, is up his alley? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perdido is right there in your wheelhouse, bro. You're going to love Perdido Street Station. I bet, I bet it, I bet it's one of your favorite books that you've ever read. I bet it's, I bet it goes right into your top 10, if not your top five. I don't know, <laughs> you know, cause I don't know all that you've read and stuff but yeah very cool can y'all hear the aesop rock pretty good i didn't get any kind of feedback on that that i saw anyways you know what i mean it's tough to to keep up with the uh <laughs> yeah uh becky's got the uh kindle covered in uh with a with a rubber you know <laughs> like rubber uh case around it you know what i mean so that when it when it bonks it's just like uh eh, whatever <laughs> Yeah, it's uh it's got some rough stuff, that's for sure. Perdido definitely has some rough stuff. Still in there. Yeah, I don't I don't um I don't read ebooks. I don't do any kind of ebooks. I got some PDFs, you know, like books in PDF form that are downloaded on my phone that I'll like read if I don't have anything else around, but that's rare. Very rare. Oh, Josh, please do it and let me know what you think, man. It was one of the best um, reading experiences of my whole year. And, man, 
You know, I look I look to like Anna Karenina and Jr. You know, I look to Jr. for that kind of experience because it's this this classic like literary fiction. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, postmodern, encyclopedic, you know, big books, all that kind of stuff. That's my up my alley. You know, so that's what I look to when I'm like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna experience something really great here. I can't wait to read this. But um Perdido Street Station turned out to just be so awesome. And man, there is the most horrifying um monsters. You know, some of the most horrifying monsters that I've ever seen on the page are in Perdido Street Station. They're awesome. The slate moths. They're awesome. Nice. Yeah, I like cosmic horror, you know, like uh Lovecraft and all that and, and you know, stuff on the on the in the vein of that. I don't know the great god plan. Might check it out, that's for sure. <laughs> Aw. Y'all girls. Hey Danny. Thanks for coming by, Danny. For sure. So I've uh you know, I, I got I got a few more on. I just want to touch on because I did promise a haul in my description, so I want to make sure everybody knows uh, what what I have hauled, which is Susan Sontag's uh, journals and notebooks. I got this uh, on on the clearance. You know, two dollars, two dollars for the hardcover. What a, what an awesome find. And uh, Sontag's a master. I got a, a Kabbalah, Adam and the and the Kabbalistic tree. This is a Jewish Kabbalah, and I love Kabbalah, and it is some very very interesting stuff. And this looks like a very ex extensive exploration of Kabbalah. And then I got Gandhi's Mahatma Gandhi's um, autobiography. The story of my experiments with the truth. I'm a, I'm interested to see what all is in here, and if if uh, Tolstoy's book, The Kingdom of God Is Within You, is mentioned in here, because um, I hear that it was a pivotal work uh, that Gandhi had come in contact with that shaped his uh, kind of worldview, and it and it is an amazing work. I love. Tolstoy's The Kingdom of God is Within You. It is an amazing, amazing work. You're gonna, um, you will, you will not, uh, you will not be ready for the amount of reason and logic that Tolstoy puts on, uh, the New Testament and what it means to be a Christian and argues very convincingly what it really means to be a Christian, and that is no personal property. It is a socialist anarchy and no military. Any country that professes to be a Christian country should demilitarize. <laughs> right? So, uh, you know, ain't nobody ready for all that, right? <laughs> Very fun. Where one should start with Tolstoy is short stories, for sure. Um, you know, go ahead and uh, get uh, Haji Murad, um, The Death of Ivan Ilyich. Um, get a collection of short stories and read, read them all. Uh, How Much Land Does One Man Need, um, Two Deer, Those are there, there, there's The Three Hermits, things like that. You know, just read his short stories, and then read Anna Karenina, for sure. I uh, I have a three-part video on my channel uh, going through my, uh, my take on Anna Karenina. I read it in March. It was awesome. Just an awesome experience. What an amazing book. And I say that Anna Karenina is like experiencing um, Romeo and Juliet for the first time. It's that level of an amazing story. Um, and, you know, Anna Karenina, I don't think I'm giving any spoilers away by saying Anna Karenina's story is a tragedy. For sure. Uh, Tolstoy is an amazing storyteller. 
So um, I wanted to show, just because I'm also showing David Foster Wallace's Oblivion, because we're getting into that and going to read through it a bit, that um, I got This Is Water. Some Thoughts Delivered on a Significant Occasion About Living a Compassionate Life by David Foster Wallace. So I found this at a, as, at, at a thrift store as well and just picked it up because I've listened to the talk that David Foster Wallace gave to the Kenyon University uh, graduating class. His speech to the Kenyon University graduating class is one of the greatest speeches that I've ever heard in my life and I've heard it now, you know, 15 times or more. It's amazing. It, it, is, it is something that you should experience and you should experience over and over. But I was happy to see that there's a text format and that I can, you know, kind of read it and take it um, as I will. And it is beautiful. It is amazing. So I hope that, uh, I hope to turn some people on. This is right up your alley, Summer. <laughs> but go ahead and uh, just even YouTube. David Foster Wallace, This Is Water. It's like a 25-minute speech, and it is well, well worth your time. It is so beautiful and awesome. Hey, Sarah. Thanks for coming by, Sarah, for sure. So, um, wow, a complete Tolstoy short stories for two bucks. I have like three different volumes of Tolstoy short stories and I still don't think that I own everything. So that is a, that is a crazy deal to go ahead and, um, <laughs> to go ahead and get the entire, uh, Tolstoy short stories for, uh, for two bucks. That's ridiculous. But you're talking about in a uh, ebook form, right? Mmm. Yeah, to the Lit House. You know what's up. Yeah, it's very powerful. Um, I did a video on my channel if you want to search it out. It's uh, it's called, um, Is Atheism Valid? And it is basically using uh, David Foster Wallace's This Is Water to make the argument that he says explicitly in the talk at some point. He says, everybody worships. And that is true. You know, everybody worships something. Everybody devotes themselves to something. The trick is to devote yourself to something higher, <laughs> right? Because if you devote yourself to something lower, <laughs> well, then you uh, you just bring yourself down and all that kind of thing. So um, it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. I figured it was eBooks. A two dollar, you know, Tolstoy complete short stories is going to be a two is going to be eBooks for sure. Um, but well worth it, even still well worth it. Cause you can, you can still experience all the stories and all that kind of thing. It's, um, they're amazing. They're amazing. Um, I love, I love Tolstoy's short stories, but, um, I can't really, uh, suggest enough reading, uh, the kingdom of God is within you because it's not a story. This is, he wrote a book called What I Believe later in life. And he uh, was laying out his personal belief system, which is a very esoteric, mystical kind of Christianity. And he was laying out what I believe and it. And it got a lot of backlash, right? It was a censored book in Russia, I believe. <laughs> and, um, and so he... He got a lot of backlash, and, and then he wrote a response to what I believe, and that response is, the kingdom of God is within you. It's awesome. It's completely awesome. And I love it. And it is dense, <laughs> but uh, uh, to the lit house, that is right up your alley. Okay? Um, the kingdom of God is within you by Leo Tolstoy. I would love to hear your take on that, <laughs> but I've, I've given you, uh, I give you the, the main points, 
But what he does is he extensively works out the logic behind uh, the socialist anarchy that is laid out in, in uh, the Christian framework. And the he calls it the non-resistance to... <laughs> <laughs> he he works out the he calls it the non-resistance to violence by force and it is a thing it is turn the other cheek and and it is that worked out to its logical end and that's just what it is and so um on a societal level what that means is demilitarize and it is very very um I would say yeah. Uh, Last look says uh, is what I believe worth seeking and uh, reading before the kingdom of God is within you. And I would say yes, uh, for sure. But um, it's also it's not it's not required because uh, Tolstoy was writing for the everyman, and he was at that point in his career he's writing for even the peasant class. You know what I mean, kind of stuff. So it was a kind of thing where he didn't expect, you know, uh, the readers to have had a previous experience with any of his works when they come in contact with any of his other works. Hey, Paul, Snowcone72 in the house. Thank you for coming by, brother. For sure. <laughs> Everyone thinks of changing the world, but no one thinks of changing themselves. Well, um... Sweeping generalizations, right? Because I think a lot of people do think of changing themselves. I don't think, I personally don't think of changing the world at all. <laughs> all right? Especially not the kind of uh, cluster we have going here in the United States. Um, you're not going to get up there and say anything and change a lot of people's minds. And it's not about that. But you, can, I can change myself. I can learn more and grow and expand in different kinds of ways and apply those kind of things to my life. And that's just it. You know what I mean? So uh, to the Lit House, you'll see that uh, I did this whole year right now. I'm in a year of Tolstoy. <laughs> on, my, on my channel, one of my playlists is called A Year with Tolstoy. And uh, this year I've read just a lot of Tolstoy. And I haven't done a video on The Kingdom of God is Within You yet. Because I want to revisit it before I do a video on it. And I'll probably do that just to kind of cap off that playlist. Yeah, his existential crisis because he, uh, he did see himself as an atheist. He rejected the church. He was really against, you know the exoteric uh, institution of religion in Russia. And, uh, you know, most real Christians, like if you follow Jesus' teachings, okay, you're not going <laughs> to, you know, the church is not necessarily your friend, okay? Because the church is an institution that is put in, in place to, uh, you know, welcome in, those that don't have faith, those that don't, uh, you know, that aren't practicing Christians. And so, um, he, he saw himself as a, as, as, as an, as an atheist for a lot of his life, but even Anna Karenina, you know, he wrote that in, during an atheist part of, part of his life. And even Anna Karenina, um, has very Christian theme with Karenin who is Anna Karenina's husband, his whole story arc, what he goes through, his thinking, and how he processes everything that goes on, and all that, in the, in the book of Anna Karenina, Karenin's thing is a testament to how to be the most Christian. It, it's wonderful. Uh, his, his kind of thinking and what he gets to in the story. So, um, you know, Tolstoy wasn't opposed to Christianity. What he was opposed to is the church, you know, the church of Russia. 
but um, he still, you know, had a lot of work to do. But yeah, his his existential crisis made him one of the most powerful Christian storytellers, true Christian storytellers that we have. And so uh, his later works, his uh, short stories, his later works is exactly uh, that kind of thing. And they're super powerful. They're very cool. Yeah. Yeah, exactly right. Exactly right, Last Looks. Um, there's, there's, there's so many, you know, major things that are aspects of the life of Jesus um, that, that can't be avoided, but actually are not uh, spoken from the pulpit ever. You know, ever. Because the... They don't know how to reconcile that. You know, Jesus is all about peace and love and forgiveness. But over here, he's judging and flipping tables. You know? And, and I mean, rightfully so. That stuff has to be reconciled. That is food. That is grist for our intellectual mill. For us to, you know, grow by. And, and not to be, you know... <laughs> Not to be pushed up, not to be pushed away. That's for sure. Yeah, I uh, to the lit house. I know it. I know it's right up your alley. You're gonna love it. Um, I mean, you're going to. You're gonna get deep. You, I mean, you'll you'll be able to penetrate deep into that work right off the rip, uh, with the kind of philosophical background that you have, even just in uh, what you've read. I don't. I don't. I don't pretend to know everything that you've read or something, but. Even just uh, having a philosophical background and being interested in philosophy and the Virginia Woolf stuff, you know what I mean? Stream of consciousness stuff really getting in people's heads. Um, that Tolstoy, you're going to be able to just, it's you're just going to drink it in. It's so good. So good. Ah. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, the Anna Karenina is so good. Um, are you re are you listening to the Peaver and Volkonsky uh, translation? I'm just interested, and no worries if you don't know. But uh, Peaver Volokon Volokonsky are a husband and wife translation team that translates just uh, Russian works, and it's fantastic. Their translations are fantastic from what I've uh, seen so far, for sure. Book sure. Welcome to the uh, welcome to the live. Thank you for coming by. Uh, first time I've seen you on the channel, so you are very welcome. And uh, I'll, I'll move out of the way, <laughs> show you a little bit of 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 what I've shown and what I've hauled. I've shown shown some haul action, and then what I'm currently reading and what I'm future reading. So, Wide Saragasso C by Jane Rice. Gene Rice. I've never read it. I picked it up at a thrift store for cheap because I saw the book chemist had done a video on it. Charles Dickens, David Copperfield, I'm reading in December. Gabriel Garcia Marquez, 100 Years of Solitude. I'm doing a buddy read in, in January with that. William Gaddis's JR, I'm reading currently right now. I'm about halfway through. This is a freaking oh, amazing ride. David Foster Wallace action. Uh, we're doing short stories of uh, of oblivion there. That's right, last looks. I think you got it just right right there. Oh, yeah. I love I love the book chemist. I I uh, he's one of the first booktubers that I started following because I was uh, reading uh, along with him uh, Gravity's Rainbow. <clears throat> I loved it. I love Thomas Pynchon. So, uh, that's how I found the book chemist. And yeah, I love a hundred years of solitude. I read it a long time ago and it's about due for a reread and I'm reading it with a bunch of people that haven't read it before. <laughs> so I'm going to be able to like re experience all this for the first time through others. I got Gandhi's autobiographical works the story of my experiments with the truth I picked this up at half price books so uh, that's part of my haul action right there I got a Kabbalistic work 
Adam and the Kabbalistic Tree. This is a Jewish Kabbalah. And I love, I love Kabbalah. When I first came in contact with Kabbalah, it totally locked down my mind for like a year. <laughs> Couldn't think of anything else. Just studied Kabbalah for like a year. And, and then was finally like, okay, I, uh, I think I'm understanding a little bit of this now, you know? And then I got Susan Sontag's Reborn Journals and Notebooks, 1947 and 1963. Hardcover binding, got it for like two bucks. What a steal, huh? So, uh, I love Sontag. What an, what an amazing, uh, intellectual she was. And on the... On the question of being intellectual, she said, um, I'm not going to say I'm not an intellectual, you know what I mean? I wouldn't deny it, but I'm not an intellectual, you know, just an intellectual. You know, I'm a, I'm a dreamer, and I'm a reader, and I'm a writer. And uh, I think that's what, you know, the, the, kind of, the kind of people that we love, writers, you know, they're readers, like us, and they're dreamers, and the best, um, the best writers are the writers that dream perfect dreams for us, like Gabriel Garcia Marquez, um, Calvino, that's, that's from the back of that Calvino autobiographical, autobiographical work that I'm reading right now, that he, they, they dream perfect dreams for us, and they, uh, and they bring it, and they bring it home. Thanks, Chris. Very cool, buddy. <laughs> Very cool, man. If, uh, if, if Book Chemist... Yeah, so Book Chemist did, uh, did reply to a couple of my comments before, too. It was before I had my BookTube channel. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, I was like, I was like, yeah, he, he sees me. <laughs> Cause he's so cool, man. He's so cool. Where would one start with pension? Dude, Chris, first off, Chris from the basement. I'm super glad that you're digging my philosophical sci-fi, man. That's a really fun series for me. And it's going to keep going on because, uh, philosophical sci-fi is my kind of sci-fi. That's really, uh, my, my kind of favorite sci-fi. So, um, you know, I'm a, I might, I'll do some high ph philosophical sci-fi, the kind of stuff that I'm doing now, transcendental, sci transcendental sci-fi kind of stuff. But if I run out of, you know, material or whatever, uh, I might do like moral philosophy in sci-fi, you know, kind of bring it down to a more human day-to-day uh, -day place with my philosophical sci-fi series. We'll see how it goes, you know. We'll just see how it goes. So where should you start with pension? Um, it, that's, a, that's a tough question. Most of my life, I have said Vineland. Vineland as your next pension. Because it's a perfect pension book. It's so fun. It's so cool. It's so all over the place. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's super funny. And, and the story is very intriguing, but actually I think the best uh, next pension for you, for anybody, is Inherent Vice. Inherent Vice is super accessible, and it's an amazing story. And then, Bleeding Edge, because Bleeding Edge is so damn good, and Bleeding Edge is a period piece of a time period that we're living in right now. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, late 90s going up to 9-11 uh, in New York. That's the time period that um, Bleeding Edge is in. So everybody has some context for that. So um, I, I, I say Inherent Vice, for sure, and then um, Bleeding Edge. And then after that, man, you're on your own. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't help you out. I'm reading Against the Day in February. And it'll be my first read of uh, Thomas Pynchon's Against the Day. I'm doing that in February. So, uh, very cool. Uh, Scott says, I've acquired a few Pynchon books now. Should I start with Inherent Vice or Vineland? 
Inherent bias. All the way. And I'm pretty sure Mason and Dixon isn't the place to start. <laughs> Mason and Dixon is not the place to start. <laughs> after I read, um, after I read Against the Day, Mason and Dixon will be the, the, uh, only pension that I have left to read. So, um, I can't wait. And I, and I think that it's good. I think it's good to have Mason and Dixon be the last one. Um, I think Against the Day might be, you know, my favorite. But I love Bleeding Edge. I mean, Bleeding Edge really might be my favorite. I know that that's the book chemist. He said that that was his favorite. And, uh, I mean, it's awesome. <laughs> but, I mean, I, I will say, if I, if I talk about any pension novel, I'm going to say, it's awesome. <laughs> okay? Like, any one of them. Um, not the, not V so much. I mean, V is great. And I mean, it's def definitely worth a read and all that kind of stuff. But V is not a, 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 a cohesive narrative at all. You know, it's just not. And, uh, the crying of lot 49, I don't really, you know, I don't really, you know, push that one as far as like, Oh, yeah, you know, if you want to get into pension, read The Crying of Lot 49. I don't really get, I don't really get that, you know what I mean? It's, it's a, it's a, it's a long, short story, is what it is. And it'll give you a taste of what pension's all about, but it's not, you know, his novels are so much better. You know, like, just bigger and better, and they're just, you know, it just is what it is. So, very cool. Nice. Very cool. Uh, very cool last looks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can't go wrong with Vineland. I mean, I love Vineland. I really do. But just just, just a warning. Vineland is anti-climax at its best. So you're not, you know, just so so you're not disappointed. You're coming up on a an anti-climax. The journey is what it's all about. The story is what it's all about. But that's every pension as well. Not every pension is an anti-climax. I'm saying that every pension is all about the uh, the story. The story, the journey that you're on. That's what it's really all about. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool, Bookshore. I, uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, aware of your channel. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll check it out as soon as the stream is over and I'll subscribe for sure because uh you know supporting each other right my baby Emily says books books and strong readers right so uh I do have a reddit I don't ever get on reddit because I can't even like follow stuff on reddit I don't I'm not you know I don't know. I don't get how it how it's laid out too much. But I do have a Reddit and my name on Reddit is Soft Readers GTFO. <laughs> so uh that's just how it this is how it goes. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah, I can't wait to uh I can't wait to uh you know talk some pension with y'all if you read it. Yeah, yeah, Danny. I mean Crying of Lot 49 is so weird. And, you know, like I say, it's a long short story, you know? And it's just not... There's not the kind of ideas that Pynchon really gets at. You know, they're reminiscent. I mean, they're they're there in, in a limited capacity. But in his novels, he, he really goes off the rails. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, uh... So I don't, I don't really, I don't really, uh, advocate the crying of Lot 49 at all. And, you know, it's short, so it's more accessible, so that's why people read it, but it's just not, it's just not, it's just not there for me. Cool. Last looks. You're gonna really love, <laughs> I love boring movies. <laughs> oh, God. I don't even know what that means, last looks. <laughs> It's like, I love boring movies. Like, come on. Yeah, well, uh, Vineland's gonna drive you crazy at the end then. But, 
Vineland really is, I mean, like I say, I, I, I really do advocate reading Vineland to pretty much anybody because it's super interesting. There is an actual ninja in Vineland. And uh, Freesey, I said in my Thomas Pynchon video that her name was Franny, but her name is uh, Freesey. She's like the main character and nobody, and you never meet her. Okay, she's like hiding, she's like off, and she's like gone, and nobody knows where she's at and stuff. But everybody is looking for her. Everybody wants Freezy, you know? And so it's kind of like a something about Mary, <laughs> done pension style. And um, you, you just meet some of the greatest characters and how they interact and all that kind of stuff. And this ninja is unbelievably interesting all right so um vineland go for it you can't you can't do you can't do yourself wrong by going for vineland i've always felt like there's something odd about the way that lot 49 is always recommended right exactly right it's just because it's short you know what i mean it's not because it's strong because it's as strong as something else you know it's not it, it but it's it's good but it it requires so much like analysis to really pull out what pension is saying in it because it's a short story it's meant to be like that it's a very long short story <laughs> last looks i don't get it <laughs> I don't, I don't get what, what, if anybody calls a film boring, then I know it's for me. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, what, what's boring? <laughs> it's killing me. I love Solaris. Yeah, Solaris is kind of boring in a way, isn't it? But... You know, if, if you mean boring, like, art pieces, art house that doesn't have much going on most of the time, I mean, I love stuff like that. Under the Skin, right? Under the Skin, uh, Jonathan uh, Glazer. I love his movies, for sure. And they're art house, and, you know, you're just, it's atmospheric. You know, so it's not like nothing's going on. It's building atmosphere, right? <laughs> Slow cinema. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I, just, I just don't even know what to take. I love Under the Skin as well. I love everything Jonathan Glazer's done. Um, he did Sexy Beast. I love Sexy Beast. What an amazing wild movie. You know, but not a lot happens. <laughs> a lot of the movie, you know. Um, <laughs> here's a great, slow, quiet, boring film that I'd love to recommend. I mean, you're just killing me, man. I don't even know. I can't really wrap my head around <laughs> how to talk about that. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, under the skin, you know, it's just one of those things where the adaptation is, is not, is not given, you know, he did, he did an art, he did an art house movie on it. Um, you know, Charlie Kaufman doing, uh, doing, um, I'm thinking of ending things, right? For sure. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sarah, there you go. I mean, I love, I love, uh, books that are atmosphere and, uh, you know, I don't care, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I don't require a book to be a certain thing, character-driven or plot-driven or whatever. It's all about the writing. 
It's all about the author and the writing and the writing style and whether it works and all that kind of stuff. That's what that's what really that's what really matters. That's what really counts. A long day's journey into night. Okay, yeah, not the not the play that I've uh, yeah, I've definitely read it. Uh but a Chinese film, Long Day's Journey into Night. I'll check it out. For sure. I love I love I love good movies, that's for sure. My favorite, um Yeah. I'm thinking of anything's was super cool. But, you know, as far as Charlie Kaufman movies, definitely not one of my favorites. Um, but I love the atmosphere and like the car. You're like dialogue in a car. 50% of the movie or more. I love it. Mm. It was just it was just so well done. Yeah, we're still live. Hey, Steve. <laughs> but um but with with books, you know, the kind of exhaustive atmosphere, setting tones, all that kind of stuff, you know, that's if it's done well, I mean, that's all it, it, that's all it needs to be. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, really, you can just, you can just, uh, fall right into it, you know, and be there. So, uh, Aesop Rock is done. We listened to the whole album. I don't know how loud it was or whether you guys could, uh, enjoy that on the, on the stream, but either way, that's, uh, that's the new, that's the new album, and I'm not going to start another. I'm going to um, end it pretty pretty soon right here. I thank uh, everybody for coming by. Last Looks Grooming Company, I'm checking you out. Um, after, I don't know if you have content or if you're a content creator, but uh, if you are, then I'll sub. And um, Steve Fuller, Bookish Bryant's... Um, Thank you very much for coming by. Sarah, thank you for coming by, for sure. And uh, Summer. <laughs> Summer at uh, Cozy Reading with Quaker Cats. Thank you. I, I'm, I'm glad you were able to, to uh, get by. You know, I know that some, I don't know where you're at. But I tried to do this one a little bit later just to have um, others be able to join in a little bit more. Um, the Book Shore. I'm I'm checking you out as soon as we're uh as soon as we're done on here for sure. And uh Danny at Spinelli Speaks, always uh good to see you. That's for sure. Thanks for coming by the live. This was a lot of fun. I saw Scott at Shelfware earlier. I don't know if he's still uh by and uh to the lit house, always awesome. Mm. Dig dig the content, that's for sure. You got a you got good stuff. <clears throat> and um <laughs> very cool i uh glad to meet a lot of people yeah ohio cool so you're like next uh you know like an hour ahead of me or an hour behind me actually or whatever um <laughs> cool well uh grab me on instagram uh if you if you hadn't already maybe that's where you you know saw that I was doing the live or whatever. So very cool. Chris from the basement, thank you for coming by, brother. Glad you're enjoying the content and all that. And um, heck yeah, these lives are really, really fun. These lives are really, really fun for me. Well, thanks for showing up anyways, baby. <laughs> um, very cool. Yes, Scott and Becky, always great. So, yeah, check out uh, everybody, sub to everybody else. Everybody check out everybody else's content, that's for sure. We rock, and uh, y'all have a good evening. Bye-bye.